Hi, welcome to Tactical OP and Neo's Handguns and Reloading. I'm OP, and there's Neo. Hi, uh, for this video, I'm going to be showing you how I set up my case activated powder measure uh, with the meter, adjusting the metering assembly on it, and uh, the way I do it where I believe it's consistently accurate. Uh, first thing I do is I grab casings that I have already run through the sizer deprimer die. So I've deprimed them and they've been sized. I tumbled them in my rock tumbler with the uh, stainless steel uh, pin media and Dawn dishwashing liquid and Lemmy Shine. They're all dry and ready to go. Okay, I want to take a handful of these and I want to go ahead and run through the press and install primers so I can set them on a scale and weigh them with the primer in them and then get a powder charge and pull them back out and see exactly what our powder charge is we can get that dialed in where we're getting consistent readings uh, then I'll be comfortable running this in a progressive mode but until then it might as well be a single stage I want to do one casing at a time measuring every one of them so uh, let me get these primers in here and uh, to do so Go ahead and take our sizing deprimer die out and throw it off to the side. I'll go ahead and leave the expander die on it. I expand them more than one time. I don't think it matters, but uh, get a casing. Push forward. Grab another. Forward. I'm going to spin those on out of here. And I'm going to pause the camera get the rest of these ready to go and then we'll pick up with the uh, case activated power charger okay I've got some casings with the primer in them and for this next part we're going to need a scale I'm using the Frankfurt Arsenal and I will have the uh, model number and uh, Hornady item number listed at the end of the video on this piece of equipment here I'm really happy with it um, first thing I do power it up and I calibrate it grab the calibration weight okay need to hold the units button down and it'll go into calibration mode hit it again and it tells you the weight to put on it which is this is we'll set that on there wait a few seconds pass okay scale is now calibrated now we're going to go over to units again it is showing in grams right now we're going to hit the units button until we have it on grains I'm going to grab one of my 40 casings with the primer in it set it on the scale and hit tear weight zeroes it out with that casing on there that way we'll know the exact amount of gunpowder we have in there okay now we'll stick that casing in the press I have my tight group powder in my hopper I usually leave this lid off because we'll be dumping that charge right back in there uh, my lock nut is loose on the metering assembly so I can adjust that whichever way I need to let's go ahead and cycle it around up through the expander and now powder charger I'm going to bring it on around so I can pull it out and we'll see where it's set at right now I try to set it in as close to the same spot as possible on the scale and we're at 2.3 grains okay the measurement I have found that works good for me, the velocity I want with uh, the grain bullet I am running, uh, I need 4.7 grains of tight groups. So let's dump that back up into the hopper. I want to set it back in the station that will hit the uh, case activated primer charger next. Cycle it 
again. And I'm going to do that a few times since I just added powder because the powder will stick before I go adjusting on the metering assembly. Powder will stick to the inside uh, when you first put powder into your hopper and you'll have some inconsistent readings. So uh, 2.4, not that bad. I'm going to go ahead and uh, back out on our metering assembly a little bit since we're so far off. Set this casing right back in the same station again. And since we need to increase our powder charge, I'm unscrewing the adjuster knob on the metering assembly. Uh, probably about a half a turn is what I went. Run that log up uh, just a little bit. Okay. Uh, I usually go two more times before I change it again just to see what I get. 2.93. Okay, we're at three grains. Dump that back off in the hopper. Set it back in the press. We're at the same adjustment we were. Get that where I can pull it out easier. There we go. Let's see what we got. 2.9. Okay, that's pretty close to each other there. So uh, I think we're safe in backing it out probably another half turn. So let's do that. Quarter, half, and let's see what we got. and a half like I said I usually do after I do an adjustment I usually go through this twice just to make sure before I adjust it again three point four okay still a pretty good ways from uh, where I need to be at four point seven grains so we'll take one, two, three quarter turns out of there. So three quarters of a turn. And let's try it again. Four. Dump that back up and then a hopper. this scale is really good I like it but uh, it will shut off on its own automatic shut off after two minutes so uh, you kind of want to stay after it anytime I turn it off I recalibrate it when I can turn it back on we're at four grains still need to step it up a little bit I think I'm going to go another uh, the same adjustment we did uh, last three quarters of a turn one two three and that should put us really close to where we need to be four six okay real close to where we need to be dump that off in back in there Okay, uh, I don't just leave it alone after I hit the magic number either. Um, I usually go through and before I'll run it in progressive mode without uh, measuring where, where I'm not measuring every single casing. Before I get to that point, I will do this with a single casing at a, one at a time. I'll do at least uh, 10 of them and they have to all end up the same measurement before I trust where this is sitting to run it in progressive mode. And then even after that, about every 20th one, I'll do this same check. So, let's charge it again, see where we're at. Okay, 
and depending on what the bullet is going to be for as well four six we need to back out on this adjustment just slightly If these are bullets that I know that someone else is going to shoot, a friend of mine or whatever I'm making them for, uh, I measure every one of them. I don't run progressive mode. If I'm pulling the trigger on it, I'm fine with it, but uh, you know, it's just paranoia maybe. 4.7. Okay, that is the charge I am looking for. I'm going to dump that right back off in there. We're going to see if we get it again. Four, eight. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Batteries died in the camera. So, guess what? I didn't change batteries quick enough and my scale powered off. So, uh, I'm going to recalibrate it again real quick. And while well, that's taking place, um, okay, I had 4.8 on my last charge. So I went and I screwed the adjustment for the metering assembly in just slightly. I still have my lock ring loose. Um, I'm not 100% sure this is where it's going to need to be. Uh, probably may have to tweak it a little bit more. I want to see at least uh, probably five consistent 4.7 charges before I even snug that up so uh, let's see what we got okay we're good here it's calibrated and every time on this scale that is powered off and powered back on and you calibrate it's going to automatically put it in grams so we're in grains now we'll weigh our casing Hit our tear weight button, zero it out. Go back to the station on the press that's going to be next at the uh, powder measure and charge the casing. Let's see what we got. 4.7. Five. I'm dropping it, picking it up, and lightly setting it back down again. See what kind of if I get anything consistent. And it seems like 4.5. I may have screwed it, uh, screwed that metering knob in a little too far. So let's dump that one. Try it again. And usually these are, it's really good if you have your press in a temperature controlled environment, the humidity is not just awful. Um, usually it's pretty good about once you get it set holding it. Very seldom do I have to tweak it once I get it adjusted. It's just right in the beginning you're doing a lot. So that was 4.6 on that charge. Uh, it looks like I did run the metering screw in a little too far. I'm going to back it out just slightly. And when you get to this point where you're splitting hairs, uh, a tenth of a grain, um, it's just little minor adjustments on that metering assembly. Let's see what we got. Four six again. Let's see if we keep getting four six. Yeah, four six it is. Let's see if we get four six again. And you get the idea. It can take a while to get it in. Okay, four five again. Let's go back out on the metering screw a little bit. Dump that back in. I 
so it can be frustrating once you get uh, once you get it set up though you can truck right along through with it but you will go through this after cleaning that's for sure uh, I'm bad about changing calibers too often that was floating on 4.7 so we're probably right there I'd rather be a little under than a little over when I was testing these uh, with my chronograph 4.6 wasn't bad I was running about 930 foot per second at 4.6 and I did not have any stove pipes uh, no failures to eject so 4.6 was okay, I was just trying to get a, a little boost at 4.7, but I also wanted to leave myself some leeway in case I had a, uh, what I would say, a hot 4.7. If you have a 4.7 bordering on a 4.8, I didn't want to have issues with uh, case swelling, especially on a 40 with the pressures that they run. So uh, I would rather be a little under than a little over and we're teetering right there it is it is so close and it just kicked me a four or five again like i said you will get that after having the powder charger hopper empty for a while because powder tends to stick all inside of this housing inside of the rotor and when you empty all this out a lot of that that is stuck to the inside is going to fall out so until powder gets stuck there again uh, your charges can be inconsistent uh, once it's fully coated again in powder then it starts to starts to throw some consistent charges out back out on it again about an eighth of a turn and it'll probably throw a four nine or something now generally the way it works four seven okay that's the one I'm after so we'll see if we can get make sure I'm getting all the powder out of it see if we can get another four seven if we do I'll move on to a different casing then Four six. Get the camera up where y'all can see it. Four six. Four six. Okay. Try it again. I'm not going to touch the adjustment. Let's just see what it does without doing it. See if it changes. But as you can see right here, this is the exact reason. Until I get 10 of the same reading, just casing after casing after casing, and they're di you know, on different casings, um, I won't run this in progressive mode. I don't want to kick out, you just seen that the scale red 4-4 four, four on there. I don't want to kick out a 4-4 four, four charge. You know, uh, that's going to stovepipe for sure. So, uh, let's see what we get again. Yeah, maybe before I did the video, there's another 4.4. I should have ran powder through my charger a little bit so we could get that that point quicker. But this is a good example, and it's something you will run into. So uh, may, maybe it is good we did it this way because you can see what will happen until this gets coated with powder that you will get that. You'll have your charge. Next casing pops up. You know, you're three grains or three tenths of a grain less than what you should be, what you were on the casing before, uh, and that's that's all this here getting uh, coated on the inside with powder. Once it's all covered, generally you're good. Powder will flow freely through right into your meter, uh, to, into your rotor, and um, your adjustments will be pretty consistent with what you're trying to do there. Okay, so uh, I want to go ahead and so I dropped a bunch of powder in this. I want to hit tear weight again. Just in case we had any 
powder uh, grains fall up on the uh, primer and not fall out when I'm dumping it. Be sure I'm not building up the weight slowly with this. Four six. Okay. So we're right there. We're getting close. Just little tiny turns now. Like I said, four six isn't bad for my uh, the powder I use and the grain bullet I use, but four seven is what I want. And uh, there we go, four seven. I'm happy with that. Uh, like I said, I'll run a bunch more through, hit tear weight on each one, do an individual measurements on my gunpowder, and if I don't see ten in a row coming out at four seven, okay, I start over, and that one just floated down to four six with me bumping the table slightly so uh i'm right i'm probably right there you know uh if we were able to get hundredth out of this scale i'm probably like uh you know 4.68 4.69 okay which is right there but uh actually i like to have them all consistent that's the best thing uh you can be a little bit more accurate your your pattern your uh grouping will be a little closer and uh, it's pretty cool when you can get box ammo and you shoot and your casings are in a 10 foot circle when you go to pick them up and then you load bullets like this and you can stand in one area in the middle of a three foot circle and pick up all your casings i mean when they're that consistent and uh you've had a consistent grip on your gun that's the way it'll be your casings will almost be in a pile so uh that's all there is to setting this up yeah it can be frustrating but don't give up you'll get it it's just uh it's the nature of the beast just anytime powder's been out of it uh and it's not good to leave your powder in it when you're not charging i mean if i'm if i'm charging one night after work um and i know i'm going to be charging the next night i'll leave my powder in but uh, if you know you're going to be down like, you know, four or five days between uh, reloading again, it's generally good to dump your powder back in your container. Um, but uh, that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments section. And I'll be glad uh, to do what I can to help out with them. Thanks for watching.